best for soil. Compost quality. Hello, I'm Jacques. I'm a researcher at FIBL, and I did research on compost quality and compost application for more than 30 years. Today I will show you in this movie how to evaluate the quality of a compost with simple methods. This with the goal to determine for which application the compost can be used. I have here a compost sample. It is very important that the sample is homogeneous, so it represents the entire compost heap. Therefore, subsamples have to be taken from the entire heap and then be thoroughly mixed before analysis. For the characterization of the compost quality, I will consider two factors. Firstly, I use simple chemical measurements to analyze parameters that vary during the composting process, such as pH, salinity, and different mineral forms of nitrogen that are ammonium, nitrite, and nitrate. Secondly, I make biotest using plants, more exactly cress, to see the reaction of these plants once they are in contact with the compost. For the simple chemical analysis, I will make two extractions. The first one is with water to measure the salinity of the compost. The second extraction is made with calcium chloride for the measurements of the pH and the quantities of mineral nitrogen, ammonium, nitrite and nitrate in the compost. I add 500 milliliters of water to this flask. Then I add 50 grams of compost to the flask with the water. Then I add 500 milliliters of calcium chloride to the second flask. I add also 50 gram of compost to this flask. I close the flasks tightly before I will shake them for an hour. Now I will shake the two bottles with 50 grams of compost in 500 milliliter of water or calcium chloride for an hour. The pH value of the compost is measured in the calcium chloride extract before its filtration. In general, the pH value of a fresh compost varies between 8 and 8.5 and of a ripe compost between 7 and 7.5. Now I will filter the two extracts for the next analysis. In the water extract, I will measure the salinity. In the calcium chloride extract, I will measure the different forms of mineral nitrogen, nitrate, nitrite, and ammonia. The filtration will take some time, one to two hours, to obtain enough liquid for the analysis. Now I have enough water extract and can therefore measure the electrical conductivity of the extract. This gives us information on the salinity of the compost. I have now also enough calcium chloride extract and proceed to the measurement of the nitrite, nitrate and ammonium. I will start with the nitrite analysis. This is an apparatus for the rapid determination on nitrite. It is very simple and can be used under field conditions. A test strip is dipped in the extract and then inserted in the apparatus. After 15 seconds, the result is on the display. In this extract, we have no detectable amount of nitrite. This is a good sign. Nitrite is an indicator that anaerobic conditions occurred in the compost, which is undesirable. The analysis of nitrate is slightly longer. It needs 60 seconds. In a few seconds, I will know how much nitrate is in the extract. This value can be used to calculate the nitrate content of one kilogram compost dry matter. 
The analysis of the ammonium is a little bit more complicated. I pour five milliliters of the extract in a small beaker. Then I add 10 drops of reagent one, followed by a spoonful of reagent two to the beaker. After shaking to dissolve reagent two, I use again a strip to make the test. The duration of the test is longer. It needs eight minutes. For the biotest with plants, I will use Cress. I will make two different tests with Cress. The first test is the open test. I use small plastic pots with nine centimeter diameter. In this test, the Cress will respond to the direct contact with the compost. The second test is the closed test. For this test, I will use plastic jars. They will be filled half with compost and then be hermetically sealed. Under this condition, the Cress will not only react to the contact with the compost, but also to the gases generated by the compost, especially if this is not yet ripe. Therefore, the second test is highly sensitive, whereas the first one is less sensitive. The tested compost is always compared to a reference substrate. This reference is a peat substrate, amended with mineral fertilizer to obtain stable responses over the time. For the open test, three pots are filled with the compost and also the reference substrate. This is to ensure the quality and liability of the test. The amount used for the closed test is 500 milliliters in a jar with one liter volume. Then I add approximately one gram of cress seeds to each pot. I do not weigh the seeds, but I use a calibrated spoon. I distribute the seeds over the entire surface of the pot. For the closed test, I also add one gram of cress seeds. It is important that the seeds are placed along the edge, because I will measure the root length in this test. In the open test, I will measure the weight of the plants. In the closed test, the root length. The results are always in comparison with the ones of the reference substrate. This permits to compare results of tests conducted at different moments in the year, in summer or winter, even though the environmental conditions were not the same. Then I humidify the compost sufficiently and close the jars hermetically. The same, of course, for the open test. What is important for this test is to cover the pots with the plastic until the germination of the seeds, which takes 24 to 48 hours. Otherwise, the compost surface might dry out and the seed will not germinate. This could then be wrongly interpreted as a compost quality problem. It is important to leave all the pots and jars with enough light, but not in direct sunlight. Otherwise, the temperature in the jars will increase too much and the plants will not grow. They will be cooked. Here are the plants after seven days of growth. As you can see, the cress on the reference substrate grew very well. In contrast, some composts, like this very fresh one, inhibited the growth of the cress. On the contrary, on a compost much riper, the cress grew quite well. For the evaluation of the open test, I measure the weight of the sprouts. I cut them at one centimeter above the ground. In the closed test, you can see here the good growth of the roots on the reference substrate, whereas on some compost substrates, the growth was much less. This test is really more sensitive than the open test. For the evaluation, I measure the average length of the roots. Then I calculate the percentage of the root length 
compared to length on the reference substrate. For the interpretation of the test's results, you will find reference values in the Best for Soul fact sheet on the compost quality. This fact sheet is freely available on the Best for Soil website.